minus one minute. T minus fifty seconds. T minus forty seconds. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good day, Northeastern College. We are currently in a virtual seminar on research methodology in nursing context, the basics. This webinar will give you insights about the various methods in nursing research as to the design, sampling plan, data collection, and ethical considerations in a way that can easily comprehend by the participants. We are your moderators for today's event. I am Enriquez Cayaban, RN, LPT, MEN, USRN. Saganang Buhay, NC Community. I am Darwin Yarnes, RN, LPT, MEN, and we would like to thank the following participants who are presently tuning in on our virtual session. Let's give them a virtual applause to BSN3A, BSN3B, BSN. 3C, BSN 4A, BSN 4B, and dear faculty and staff of College of Nursing, thank you for now that you have spent time for this event. To have a smooth run of the webinar, these are the set rules which define etiquette during virtual activities. Sir Darwin and Vierness are an LPT MAN, one of our clinical instructors, will enumerate the following house rules. I have the honor to present to you the different house rules during the conduct of this webinar. First, see that there is no disturbance like background noise or people moving around to avoid distraction. Sit in a good lighted and noise free room. We encourage you to use earphones to fully enjoy the learning process. Check laptop or desktop before joining the webinar. Kindly choose a spot with unlimited and strong internet connection. Ensure data availability to avoid disconnection during the webinar. Please put on your microphone on, 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 on mute and camera on off during the session to avoid interruption during the presentation. Do not close or leave the Zoom app during the session to avoid being lagged out which will result in incomplete attendance. If you have any questions about the presentation or topic, you may type your question on the QA box so that the moderator can take note of it. The questions will be forwarded to the respective speaker. Keep your questions minimal and related to the topic. Make sure to put your real name, full name, anonymous names will be disregarded. In case of technical glitches, Kindly send us a message via mail or via email at enriquezkayaban90 at gmail.com. Kindly state your name and your concern. Accomplish the evaluation form to redeem your certificate. QR will be flashed on the screen. You may also check the link on the chat box. No video recording will be available to those who fail to attend the synchronous session of the webinar. Thank you. Let us all feel the presence of our Almighty God with this opening prayer. Dear Lord, we praise and worship you today. You are exalted in our midst. We ask for forgiveness for every sin we have done. Have mercy on us, our Father. 
as we start our program today, let your guidance and protection be upon us. Send your spirit to us and give us wisdom. We thank you for all the blessings we have received. We also thank you for the lives of the people in this place. Be glorified in everything we do. In your name we pray. Amen. To hear an encouraging and inspiring welcome remark, I will give the line to Ma'am Judith Lutrania, RNLPT, MAN, Head of the College of Nursing. <clears throat> Hello, ma'am. Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Sir, iki naririnig ba? Yes, ma'am. Opo, ma'am. Okay. So, maulang hapon po sa ating lahat. Um, it is an honor to give you the well, our the welcome address for for the opening remarks for this uh, seminar. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Joseph Quinto, our resource speaker for the research methodology in nursing context. So this will be um, our this will help the students in making their research, especially this uh, level, the third year and the fourth year level, para mas maganda yung ipresent nyo during your uh, defense in your research. I I also would like to thank. Uh, the facilitators, uh, Sir Eking and Sir Darwin, for making this a seminar uh, possible, even the weather is not uh, convincing. Okay, so I would like to uh, thank also the students who have uh, or who is par participating. Yung mga ilan ba tayo ngayon? Marami atang umatend. I think nasa 97 na. So. Please listen with this uh, seminar because this is very important for you to be able to make your own uh, thesis later on. Siyempre, aalis na si Sir Hiking later on. Papalit na si Sir Darwin at saka si Sir Paul maybe. So please listen. Uh, thank you for your uh, time, Dr. Joseph Pinto. And uh, I hope that uh, everyone is safe. Uh, due to the typhoon. O, kasi baka yung iba na may mga baha-baha na at um, di naman tumitila yung ulan. So please uh, sit tight and please I would like to ask the students to jot down the important uh, things that they need to uh, learn no? sa para dito. So thank you everyone and I hope this will go smoothly. Sana hindi ma-interrupt yung mga internet connection. Thank you Sir Iking, Sir Darwin. Thank you, Ma'am Luti, for that warm welcome. It is not an easy task to introduce a certain person. However, to give you a humble background of our resource speaker for today's webinar, let us all witness the academic track, work journey, interests, and achievements of our speaker. I will give the vir virtual floor to Sir Enriquez Cayaban, RN, LPT, MAN, to introduce our guest speaker. Thank you, Sir Darwin. He is an educator fully committed to touching the lives of his students through excellence in the teaching profession. He is presently a faculty member and the department's research coordinator in the Department of Arts and Communication, College of Arts and Humanities in Benguet State University, La Trinidad Benguet, in which he was awarded as one of the top 10 students choice for the most adaptive, effective, and flexible teachers amidst the new normal. Currently, he is an adjunct professor in the graduate school program, MA and PhD level, College of Arts and Sciences at University of the Cordillera, Baguio City. He holds a bachelor degree in secondary education, major in English, he's also been solicitor during that time, from St. Louis University, or SLU, 
a license in teaching in the Philippines, an international license in teaching English, a diploma and master certification in teaching English to speakers of other languages, and a certification as a neurolinguistic programming NLP practitioner. In addition, he obtained his Master of Arts in English as a second language as magna cum laude and his Doctor of Philosophy in Language Education as magna cum laude, both of which from University of Cordillera. Currently, he is enrolled in Doctor of Philosophy in Development Education at Central Luzon State University, Distance, Open and Transnational University in relation to his tenant. Always a teacher, forever a learner. His MA thesis was repackaged and was published in South Korea, while his PhD dissertation won the best paper in the University of the Cordillera, College of Arts and Sciences, Students' Research Congress. He has published various research studies in internationally indexed journals, has presented in local and international research conferences, and is currently working on research articles and research collaborations with other educators in the country leading towards publication. His research articles are available on Google Scholar, ResearchGate, and Semantic scholar for your reference. He has been invited in various speaking engagements in the country, but he has never stopped honing his skills via continuous professional development. Ultimately, he believes that he is a learner, educator, researcher, trainer, public speaker, MC, writer, and many things in between. Let's let us give a warm welcome to our resource speaker, Dr. Joseph B. Ginto. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Enriquez Gayaban, for that empowering introduction. First of all, I'd like to take this opportune moment to thank Northeastern College, particularly the College of Nursing, through Mr. Enriquez Gayaban for extending the invite and Fellow Encinians, I'm really proud because I, I was also a product of Northeastern College High School Department in which I met Mr. Enriquez and we call him, we called him, we called him Eking. And I our the inter, I mean the resource speaker or the person who opened the opening remarks also mentioned that Mr. Enriquez is being called as Eking. So it's really refreshing. Thank you very much, Mr. Enriquez Gayaban, for for that introduction. Truly, I'm looking forward to learning from you and learning with you. Let me just start sharing my screen. Yeah. In our session this afternoon, I would like to elicit your active participation because there will be certain questions that you have to answer by unmuting the microphones. There will also be some activities in which I will need your participation via the chat box and there will be an instance in which I will be needing your participation in a Kahoot quiz. Those are the things that will be expected from our participants this particular session. And welcome to our session titled The House of Research Methodology. Once again, my name is Mr. Joseph B. Quinto. In particular, our roadmap for this afternoon will be the following. I would like to take the initials of College of Nursing, C-O-N, to reflect our roadmap for this afternoon. C stands for communicate your thoughts and reflection points about research. O is to organize your methodology through top tips in research endeavors. And N is to neutralize common errors in writing your research. That's our roadmap for this afternoon. Now, let me hear your thoughts because we're listening. Kindly share your general experience in doing research. You may raise your hand or you may unmute your microphones. Could you please describe how your general experience is of research? 
Maybe I can call some individuals. Participants, let me hear your thoughts. I can see here Precious K, Precious K. Maybe not in, how about Joshua? Joshua, let's hear your thoughts. Mm, I feel like our participants are a little shy at the moment. In that case, we'll try to engage your participation via the chat box. Could you please write in the chat box what your general experience is of research? General experience. In the chat box, or you may unmute your microphones if you wish to speak. Do we have toxic? <laughs> yeah, I understand. Toxic because there might be a lot of things that you have to do and some group members that you have to deal with. That's one. Who else? How about from our students? From the College of Nursing, Northeastern College. <laughs> expensive and exciting, according to Erica. Yeah, expensive due to the various revisions that you have to make. Exciting in such a way that you will contribute to the current body of knowledge. The reason why you're conducting research is that you want to contribute to the current body of knowledge or to the current literature. It's not simply because it's a requirement from the Commission on Higher Education or just because Northeastern College would like to make your lives need to contribute to the current body of knowledge. Thank you very much for your responses. Let's Hello, continue. Yes, Ma yes, Maria Rebecca, you're saying? Hello, Hello sir, good evening. <laughs> Permission to talk po? Sure, sure, Miss Rebecca. Yes po. First of all, like, I'm now a student. I'm one of the CIs of Northeastern <laughs> College. <laughs> so, sorry, yes, Ma'am Rebecca. Previews. Okay. Actually, sir, okay. First, uh, one of the pioneers of Northeastern College, mm. as College of Science of Nursing graduates. First of all, I would like to, would like to comment super so on behalf of everybody, at the way, mga anak, Research is actually one of the, alam niyo po yung core. Tapos, I myself, kahit wala na po ako sa, di ba, academy or something, kaya po ang pumasok. Alam mo, gusto ko matuto. Kaya super grateful because of the new learnings and all. Sana yung mga bata or, oh, di ba? Yun po. Thank you, Ma'am Rebecca. Sorry, I accidentally called you up. Uh in this case, since we have clinical instructors in the Zoom room, as well as students, I'll call everybody Mr. or Miss to address everyone. Thank yes, you for well. sharing your thoughts. Yes, thank you. Yes, Ms. Rebecca. Thank you. Now, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, it, every university in the Philippines has basic core values. In general, we have instruction, research is another one, and then extension. That's the necessity of research. It's really embedded in the curriculum and in the vision mission of every university in the Philippines. We've said that to err is human. Well, the original quotation is to err is human to forgive divine. This means that human or mistakes, just like in errors that researchers that may we have thesis, thesis, Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Yes, you heard me right. That's Merriam. Merriam-Webster Dictionary is my guide here. But I'd like to ask you, which one is, is the one you need to use in your research? Is it A or B? So A, lo local, or B, locale. In the chat box, kindly write A or B the one you have to use in your thesis or in your research, A or B, local or 
locale. B, B, correct? That's locale and the pronunciation is locale. Not local, but locale, that's correct. Thank you for your responses. How about in the next one? Is it A, rational or B, rationale? Please write A or B, the one that you'll use in your research or thesis, A or B. B, 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 uh-huh, okay, that's correct. So you have rationale, B, and be careful with the pronunciation, that's rationale, not really rational, rationale. Another common error that researchers commit are the following. So let's try to differentiate IMRAD and IMFAD. This is really common, IMRAD and IMFAD. Now, in the, in the comment section, could you please tell me what IMRAD stands for, if you're familiar with it? IMRAD, and then only IMRAD. That's the basic part of your research. So you have I, I stands for, let's see, introduction, right. How about M? M stands for, yep, introduction, that's right. M stands for this enhancing, sure, clinical setting, methods, and senior future nurses go. Right, methods, or in general, we call it methodology. In general, we call it methodology. And then RNA, I feel like you know how, what it, or what it stands for, RNA, you have, Results, correct, results. Results and discussion, discussion. I'd like to emphasize, right, that discussion doesn't have an S. So you have introduction, methodology, results in discussion. This, is, this framework is commonly used in quantitative research, quantitative research. On the other hand, if you'd like to take qualitative research as your approach, you're gonna use IMFAD, so you have Introduction, methodology, findings, and discussion. So F stands for findings, findings and discussion. However, we may have some institutional formats. Maybe Northeastern College, College of Nursing has a particular format that they follow. You simply have to follow. But in general, you have IMRAD for quantitative, IMFAD for qualitative research studies. Let's proceed to the next. Base from is really common, although this is found in the conclusions area of your thesis, it's not base from, it has to be based on. The preposition that you have to use is based on, that's the preposition on. And then results and discussion doesn't have S for discussion. Findings and discussion doesn't have S for discussion. Just a little reminder, this is common in the methodology section of your thesis or your research. When do you use adopted from with an O and adapted from with an A? So there's a great difference between the two, and I hope that you're going to incorporate this in your research. In the research field, there's a difference between the two. First, of course, the pronunciation, you have adopted for O, adapted for A. CORB 2012 stated that if you find a pre-existing instrument or a tool that will be useful to measure a key variable in your study, there are two ways that the instrument or the tool can be used in your study. The first is to take the instrument nearly verbatim or word for word, which is called adopting with an O. On the other hand, if you want to significantly or not really significantly alter or change the instrument or the tool, we call that adapting the questionnaire with an A. I hope that the difference between the two is crystal clear. Nonetheless, what I encourage or what I require with my thesis advisees is that they always have to adapt with an A meaning they always have to undergo or to alter or to change some things in the, in the instrument or the tool 
Specifically, I would like them to undergo validity tests and reliability tests because these two things are necessary for the methodology section of your thesis or your research. Once again, I'd like you to share your thoughts because we're listening. Whenever you search for information or related literature, what do you use? Kindly write them in the chat box. Whenever you search for pieces of information in the literature, which, which engines or which databases do you use? In the chat box, kindly write them down. Which research engines or databases do you use? Yes, you have Google search, Google Scholar, right? Google Scholar, mm -hmm. Google Scholar, I see. Well, Google Scholar is the most popular research engine or database, correct? We also have ResearchGate, that's right. Link that has .edu, right. You have to be careful because some of the URL addresses that we where we copy and paste from might not be a reliable source. So we find sources with .edu or .org, right. Science Direct, that's also correct. Thank you very much for your responses. Now, I'm going to share with you some other research engines or databases that you can utilize in your search because under the methodology section, you also need to scour the literature or you need to scour various data engines or various databases to define relevant terminology or relevant terms. So the mo most popular is the, is the Google Scholar search. And whenever you use Google Scholar, you also have to make sure that you tweak some settings so that it can specifically be patterned with what you need. For example, you want to search for literature that are only between five and 10 years old. If you can find literature that are five years old or younger, much better for your study. So always tweak the settings. Besides Google Scholar, you could also use ERIC or Education Resources Information Center. You can find that at HTTPS, the link is provided, that's eric.ed.gov. You can find a lot of resources that are reliable and you want reliable sources all the time. You can also use Semantic Scholar. You can find that at semanticscholar.org. If you want to create your own accounts, you may do so using Semantic Scholar. You could also research from Research Gates, you can find that Research Gate. You can find that on researchgate.net, and you can also create your own accounts on ResearchGate. You can also use SSRN. If you're familiar with Elsevier, Elsevier is a publisher which publishes reliable, high impact factor research studies, and most of them are paid. However, SSRN is a research engine or a database in which you can find unpaid articles, but still reliable. And it's owned by Elsevier. Another one is JSTOR. You can find that at jstor.org. Some of the items or some of the studies here are paid. However, you can still find some reliable sources that are unpaid. It just entails a little patience from you to search for relevant articles or studies. You could also use CORE, and it's found on core.ac.uk if you wish to search for more open access articles. When you say open access articles, these are research studies that are for free. And so I'd like you to grab the opportunity to find all the research materials that you need. You could also search on DOAJ or Directory of Open Access Journals, which can be found on the doaj.org. So here, open access entails free articles. And I'm pretty sure that your clinical instructors or your thesis advisors will require you to scour literature that are made in the Philippines. And here is where you can find them. You can have Philippine e-journals, Philippine e-journals, which can be found on ejournals.ph. Please do search for, for Philippine made research studies here. It's not only 
the research articles don't only belong in the humanities or education sector. You can also find relevant science related articles here on Philippine e-journal. So please make use of these research engines because they will prove useful and significant in your research endeavors. Let's proceed to the next. We have plagiarism. Could you please write in the chat box one word, one word that you associate with the word plagiarism? What is one word that you associate with the word plagiarism? Stealing, stealing, copying. Right, right. So these are some terms that you all read. And I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with plagiarism, but still as research advisors or as research students, this is really something that you have to take into account and to take into heart and into mind because academic integrity is necessary in the field of research. How can you be a researcher if you're not, if you plagiarize or you don't have academic integrity? That's the reason I want to emphasize what plagiarism means. According to Teresita, hold on. According to Torrecampo, these are in which you can plagiarize. You have committed plagiarism when you use ideas not your own and didn't cite the source, even if you rewarded the text entirely. So you always have to attribute your, your sources or you have to make sure that the sources are there. Another one is when you use the wording or ideas, even if reworded without citing the source, even if you didn't intend to plagiarize or didn't know you were plagiarizing. I'm pretty sure you've read or you've seen one magna cum laude student from a state university here in the Philippines in which he plagiarized a speech. And he said that it, he didn't know whether he knew it or he didn't know it, that's still plagiarism. Using at least six words in succession of a material without quoting and citing its source. So your minimum is six. And when you use that in succession, that's still considered as plagiarism. Using the same words and ideas in another language, well, you're not gonna use this in the methodology section because you're gonna use the English language and so we can proceed to the next, which is submitting the same text for two different subjects or teachers or purposes. You can plagiarize yourself. Like you submit this particular article to one subject teacher, and then you submit exactly the same article to another subject teacher. That's still plagiarism. Or this is common among students, patching together, cutting up and pasting words to create a mosaic of words by the same or another or other authors. So copy, paste from another source, copy, paste, and you claim that it's already yours. That's still plagiarism. Patching up together ideas to create a mosaic of ideas by the same or by other writers. Writers, for example, from blogs or you have a vlog there and you simply transcribe the data, that's still plagiarism misquoting the words of an author, that's still plagiarism, wrongly citing bibliographic data of the source, including wrongly attributing text to a source or inventing a bibliographic source for certain words or ideas. That's why your thesis advisors might be really meticulous when it comes to your bibliographic entries or your references page, because that's part of the procedure or that's part of the practice. All in all, Teresita Maceda, a professor in UP, beautifully said that, that claiming another one's words is dishonest. The original author must have spent much time developing her or his thoughts and expressing these in a style uniquely his or her own. If a plagiarist isn't found, it will become a habit and it will be easy for her or him to lie, cheat, and be corrupt. But worse, a plagiarist who eventually becomes corrupt will have lost her or his soul. Katapatan. Katapatan is all that's required to keep our integrity and dignity intact. So that's definitely academic integrity. Now, in my research classes or among my thesis advisors, 
advisees. I mean, I use, I run, I always run their submissions on a plagiarism checker. I use Turnitin. Turnitin. Could you please give me a thumb up reaction if you've heard of Turnitin? Thumb up reaction if you've heard or used Turnitin. I see. So far, none among our participants. This is really important because it identifies how much, how much you have copied and pasted. So if I were you, this is paid by the way, this is a paid account in case the College of Nursing can subscribe to a Turnitin account, the better. It can be useful, really useful so that your thesis advisors, or I, I mean thesis advisees, won't plagiarize. You can also use Plag Scan, but this is a little weaker than Turn It In. Still, it can be useful to identify how much students copy and paste. Or maybe you've tried Grammarly. Very weak. It's really weak, but still a little useful in identifying how much researchers copy and paste. And again, please discover this on your own due to our limited time slot. Let's proceed to the next. Again, kindly share your thoughts because we're, we're listening. Mm, kindly tell me, kindly tell me what uh, or how you do not plagiarize in the chat box. How do you not plagiarize? What are your steps? Paraphrase, what else? What else do you do besides paraphrasing? Citation, that's correct. Paraphrase, that's correct. I, I think, yeah, giving citations, right. When you give citations, you give both in-text citations and reference citations. In-text citations are also known as text citations or narrative citations. And then there's another citation at the end of your paper, right? Rephrasing, that's also right. However, in the meantime, I would like to emphasize paraphrasing as a way not to plagiarize. Once again, Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines paraphrasing as a restatement of a text passage or work, giving the meaning in another form. In this case, you use paraphrasing so that you won't plagiarize. But there are certain issues that we have to talk about. Ruslan et al. 2021 mentioned that respondents' obstacles in paraphrasing, which their study found are number one, <laughs> difficult to find out the appropriate synonym to change words on original text. Number two, difficult to understand unfamiliar terms. Number three, unable to restructure sentences in new ones. And number four, no idea on how to paraphrase texts effectively. That may sound familiar to you. You're already in college, meaning you've had a series of research endeavors. So the skill in paraphrasing must already be instilled. To add, all obstacles occur due to some causal factors like one, lack of vocabulary, two, lack of paraphrasing practice, three, ineffective class when learning, four, teaching techniques of lecturers or thesis advisors, and five, limited knowledge of paraphrasing techniques. But there's a way, there's a way to ensure that you can paraphrase. And how can we do that? Using Quillbot. Can you please use, or can you give me a thumb up reaction if you've used Quillbot before? Quillbot. Yes, we have here Miss Donna. Who else have used Quillbot before? Miss Daniel, Miss Jenilyn, Miss Jovi, Miss Marion. Who else have used Quillbot before? Miss Hanley? Yeah, Ms. Mr. Kelly, probably. 
yes, please do use Quillbot because Quillbot will help your lives, your research lives a lot easier. I've used Quillbot and it's for free. Although you can subscribe to a paid account, you can make use of your of the free account and it can prove useful and you can use that. So use Quillbot. In general, Quillbot is a paraphrasing and summarizing tool that can help a lot of students like you and me and even professionals like you and me cut the writing time by more than half. So it's an intelligent artificial intelligence application or software. So you can use that. Sir, is it possible to plagiarize when paraphrasing? There's a question from Mr. Dar Darwin. Yes, it's possible to pa plagiarize when paraphrasing if you don't attribute where it came from. Or if you paraphrase maybe one whole long paragraph, that's still plagiarism. Use, usually you can only paraphrase um, one, two sentences and then you find another source in which you can paraphrase and to make your, your, your how do you call this? The, the organization of your thoughts more clearly. So yes, you can still plagiarize when paraphrasing. So you have to be careful. If you have questions, you may also write that in the chat box. I think we can proceed to the next. APA 7th edition is the most usual that we use. And hopefully, you're, no problem. No problem, Mr. Darwin. And hopefully, your institutional format already requires you of APA 7th edition. And there are certain nuances or certain particular differences from the APA 6th edition and 7th edition that you have to bear in mind. At any rate, at any rate, I'd like you to watch this video, this YouTube video, and I'd like to hear your thoughts later on APA 7th edition. So please enjoy watching. An in-text citation concisely identifies the source of information. Can you hear the audio? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thank you for your responses. So let's continue. More ideas. It helps the readers to locate the corresponding entry in the reference list at the end of your paper. You should include an in-text citation every time you paraphrase or quote from a source. In this video, you'll learn how to use in-text citations according to the APA Style 7 edition guidelines. I'll explain what information to include, how to integrate it in a sentence, and what to do with multiple authors and missing information. Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. The in-text citation always consists of the author's last name and the publication year no matter the source type. If you're citing a specific part of a source, also include a locator. For books, this is usually a page number. For videos, a timestamp. And for web pages, you may use a paragraph number or heading. You only need to include a page number when you're using a direct quote. To keep your in-text citations correct and consistent, you can use Scribber's free citation generator. Just click and paste. It's that easy. Now. You can integrate your in-text citation into a sentence using either parenthetical or narrative citation. For parenthetical citations, write the author name and publication year within parentheses. These are usually placed at the end of the sentence, just before the period. For narrative citations, the author's name appears naturally within a sentence. Place the publication year directly after the author's name, like the example here. When your source has multiple authors, a maximum of two authors are included in the in-text citation. If there are more, you use et al, which means and others. For a source with two authors, you use an ampersand between them, followed by the year. So here, it's Harris ampersand Cook, 2020. When your source has three or more authors, simply take the first author's last name and add et al, comma publication year. If your institution follows the AP 6 edition, it's a little bit different. Check out this video here. What if the source you're using is missing some key information? Let's take a look. If the author is unknown, but you know the organization that created it, 
In this example, it's Tesla. Then you should use the organization name. If you don't, then use the title. When using the title, format it the same way as in the reference list. So either in italics or in double quotation marks. And always use title case capitalization. If the title is long, it's shortened in the in-text citation. You might also come across sources without a publication year. In that case, use ND for no date. If you're quoting a specific passage, but your source doesn't have page numbers, include an alternative locator such as a timestamp, chapter, or paragraph number instead. We've covered the basics of in-text citation and some of the common exceptions. There are a few more such as when you're citing works from two different authors with the same last name or several works from the same author in the same year. In these situations, the in-text citation may be ambiguous. Check our article to learn what to do. Make sure to click this playlist to watch more about APA 7. I'll see you. There you go. So that's the video on a, a, a short video on APA 7th edition. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts here. Let's have some realizations or some key takeaways from the video, or probably some comments, some violent reactions, or probably what you practice in your, in your department. You can unmute your microphone to speak. Who would like to volunteer or voluntold? <laughs> Let's voluntold Miss Jenilyn. Miss Jenilyn. Could you unmute your microphone from BSN3A? Mm -hmm. We are using the APA 7th edition from Sir Enriquez. That's really great if you're using APA 7th edition already. Some other thoughts. May I call probably Mr. Mr. Ramzan Rafael Domingo. Mr. Ramzan Rafael Domingo, are you in? Mm -hmm. Maybe slow internet connectivity. How about, let's call, sir, what is it again? Sorry for the connectivity issues. Ah, okay, Mr. John, what, what can you say about the video or probably what's your comment on the video or probably what is your reaction to the video? Hmm. Well, the most important thing is your college has already used APA 7th edition. That's just like really necessary. And so if you need more information on the APA 7th edition, in case you have, you don't have the APA 7th edition manual, you can always check Scribber. You can always check Scribber. See you there. It, it could be really useful and you can find it on Scribber.com scribber.com if you try to explore scribber you can also find a reference reference creator reference creator you will have to simply provide some details and it will create its reference citation for you there's a little warning though when you use scribber as your citation generator of course, this is man-made or human-made, so it's not perfect. Your APA 7th edition reference citation may not be perfect, so my suggestion is you still have to memorize how APA 7th edition referencing style is used both in parenthetical or narrative citations and reference citations. So memorize by heart, and then you can use citation generators. Also, I would like you to check out Mendeley. Mendeley, could you please give me a thumb up reaction if you've come across Mendeley or if you've used Mendeley before? Thumb up reaction from our participants. Uh -huh. 
maybe none yet. If I were you, I'd I would check out what Mendeley is and how Mendeley can be used. You can download Mendeley for free on, on your mobile devices. That's a possibility. Or you could also use it on your desktop computers. It, you could store a lot of research articles on Mendeley. At the same time, it will sync with your Microsoft Word and it will automatically generate both your in-text citations and your references citation. So, you know, I've survived my dissertation or my PhD because of Mendeley. So I highly suggest that. It's useful, highly useful. Let's proceed to the next, which is asking you whether you have questions or clarifications so far. You may unmute your microphones or you may chat them or you may key them in, in the chat box if you have questions. Silence means probably none yet. Can you give me a thumb up? Thank you, Sir Enriquez, Mr. Enriquez. Could you give me a thumb up reaction if everything's clear so far? Right, thank you for your reactions. In that case, in that case, I feel like you're now ready to play a Kahoot quiz. Kahoot quiz. However, I still have to, you know, go to Kahoot and prepare my material. In the meantime, in the meantime, so how do we cite Mendeley in APA? Oh, okay. So there's a question here in the chat box. How do we cite Mendeley in APA? Oh, Mr. Darwin. Mendeley is like your storehouse. It's like a storage device in which you can copy and paste your research articles, specific research articles. So it's a storehouse and it will sync to your Microsoft Word. So my suggestion, Mr. Darwin, is that please do explore Mendeley. Please search it on Google and find out more what Mendeley can offer and what Mendeley can do about your research endeavor. But Thank, thank you for, for that question. In the meantime, let's have a five minute health break or five minute eye break while I'm preparing my Kahoot. I hope that's fine. It's already 3.50 in the afternoon. We'll meet again at 3.55. We'll meet again at 3.55. So see you while I'm preparing my Kahoot.
Yeah, hello, good afternoon once again. Let's proceed to our Kahoot game. I hope you're ready. For the Kahoot game or for the Kahoot quiz, could you please use or open a new browser and key in kahoot.it? I repeat, kindly open a new browser and key in kahoot.it or new window, kahoot.it. Let me write it in the chat box, kahoot.it. There you go. And let me just share my screen. I hope that you can already see my screen. Mm -hmm. You can see here our game pin. If you're able to open a new window and key in kahoot.it, you'll be able to see like uh, a new screen, which will ask you for a game pin. And the game pin is flashed on the screen. That's 7087005. If your device is capable, you can also scan the QR code. So far, we have four, five participants in our Kahoot room. Let's just wait for the others. Maybe a little more instructions for the Kahoot quiz. Well, Kahoot is a game of accuracy and speed, accuracy and speed. So it's not only what you know, but also how fast you key in what you know. And you may need two screens for this matter because the questions will be flashed on my screen, but you have to answer in another window. It might need some multitasking skills here. I hope you know how to navigate that. Again, the questions will be flashed here on my screen, but you have to use another window to answer. We have 24 participants in the room right now. Let's still wait for the others. This Kahoot quiz will measure your current knowledge on APA 7th edition and some other pieces of information regarding research or thesis. There are 20 questions, true or false questions, that you have to address. There are 29 participants in the room right now. Let's give your classmates and fellow participants probably two minutes more to come in. There are 40, 41 participants right now. Forty three people in the house. One minute left to wait for your classmates or for fellow participants.
We have reached 50 participants. And we've reached our player limit. For, for those who weren't able to come in and to join us here, you may still submit your answers via the chat box so everyone can be accounted for. I repeat, for those who weren't able to join us in the Kahoot quiz, you can still participate actively via the chat box. You may key in whether the statement is true or false. And so let's begin. Right. So we have here, it's really true that quantitative research outcomes are numerically reported. That's why if you conduct your research later, you'll need a statistician for quantitative research studies, numerically reported. Let's proceed to the next. Let's see who the number one player is. We have Jewel at the moment. Qualitative articles are articles in which the authors report on original, empirical, and qualitative research. That is correct. Quantitative research, numerically reported. Qualitative research, words. You use words to report your findings. And a lot of touch of creativity. We have Atasha as number one. Next. The answer here is true. That's why it's called mixed methods because you're mixing both qualitative and quantitative or both quantitative and qualitative or simultaneously mixed methods approach. We have Atasha as number one. Next.
the answer here is at the moment it's 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 false we don't have any legal standards yet for plagiarism. However, what I practice or what we practice in our department is that when students plagiarize or when students have a very high overall similarity index when we run their papers on Turnitin, we return the papers and they have to revise, revise and revise until they can complete the 10% or 20% ceiling or threshold on Turnitin. Maybe we can have that for another session, but please do visit Turnitin. Next we have, oh, it's April now as top one. Next. The answer here is false. Well, it, it's kind of it's kind of misleading how the uh, item here is is posed, but it's not correct because if you can take a look at this, you know Jones comma R ampersand Smith comma R. We're talking about in-text citation or narrative citation, so the initials aren't really necessary. It should be Jones ampersand Smith. 2019 stated the following. Next. Let's see who the first is. April. Yeah, again, this is kind of misleading, but those who answered drew, true, yep, you are still correct. It's just that I wasn't able to complete the citation, the reference citation. Jones, comma, R, full stop, comma, ampersand, and then Smith, comma, R, full stop, open parenthesis, 2019, close parenthesis, full stop, and then continue with the title and then continue with the the publisher and then the volume and then the issue and then the URL address. We have Atasha. So next. answer here is it's incorrect it's just like the previous item when you do in-text citation you don't include the initials of the authors anymore so it should be bradley comma jones comma and is as you can see here this is an ampersand and the rule states that when we do in-text citations we don't use the ampersand in in that case we have to spell out and when you spell out an ampersand, it becomes a n d or and. That's why it's false or it's incorrect. Let's see who the top performer is. Atasha. Next.
answer here is a reverberating true. In fact, if you have 21 authors, all the author's names must be enumerated in the reference citation or on the references list. That's, that can be found at the end of your research. However, when you do them in the in-text part or in the narrative part, you only use the first name and then you use et al. Say there are 20 authors, you enumerate them in the references citation part, but it's only going to be Quinto 29, Quinto et al. 2022. So it's true. We have Ivor as the top student or top performer. Next. Right, the answer is true. Include all the details that you can about the article. So Ivor is that is on top. Up. Next. That is correct, whether intentional or intentional. That's why there may be a separate part of ethical considerations in your paper. So Atasha is on top. Next. That's true. It should be a no-brainer to us. Let's see who the, the top performer is at this time. Next. It's true. That's a short quotation. Meaning, if you go beyond 40, you have to put it in another paragraph and then you have to put some indentions. And Atasha is on top. Next question or next item. This is true. You have to use the DOI or the URL address. You simply have to copy and paste that. And then we have Atasha as the person on top. Next. <laughs>
That is definitely a false, a false. When you use retrieve from or access from, that retrieve from that's used in the APA 6th edition. But in the 7th edition, you no longer use retrieve from. You directly copy and paste the, the URL address. Please do review the APA 7th edition. Atasha is on top. Next. That is true, all kinds of sources. And as you can see, it's made in 2020. So the APA 7th edition was created in 2020. It's relatively new. Et is on top, next. Yes, I'm happy that almost everyone got it correctly. So you have et al, which means and others, and be careful of the punctuation mark. So it's et, space, al, full stop. Next, we have et on top. The answer here is false. Let me clarify. You use the ampersand all the time in the reference citations. I repeat. You use the ampersand all the time if you're creating a reference citation. How, however, for narrative text citations or in-text citations, it depends on the situation. I'm going to write it in the chat box. Let's say quinto and quinto and kakanindin 2020. This is an example of an in-text or a narrative citation. However, it could also be Kinto en Kaka Nindin, 2020. This is still an example of an in-text or a narrative citation. So it depends for a narrative or in-text citations with regard to the use of an ampersand, but it's always used when you use reference and citation. So please review the APA 7th edition on Scrubber. Et is on top, next. The answer here is definitely a false. Nevertheless, I'd like to impart with you that it's still being used in some other references or in some other publications, but I feel like at Northeastern College, you don't use contractions. Let's see who the person on top is, Atasha, next item.
the answer here is a reverberate, reverberating false. You have to be careful. References with multiple authors should be listed in alphabetical order. I repeat that, alphabetical order. In this situation, Adams 2014 should be first, followed by Dodson 2016, followed by Smith 2010. So it's not chronological, it's alphabetical. Let's see who the person on top is. We have Ed. Next. The answer here is a false. APA stands for American Psychological Association. I repeat that, Psychological Association. Let's see who topped our Kahoot quiz this afternoon. Third place, we have April J. Congratulations. Second place, we have Atasha. Congratulations. And our top one, we have Ed. Super congratulations. So that's about our Kahoot quiz. At this moment, I'd like to ask some of you or probably a few of you if you have questions before we proceed to the next part of our discussion. Do you have questions or clarifications? Please ask them now. Yeah. Psychological, right? Do we have questions at this moment? You may unmute your microphones if you do. Mm -hmm. Maybe your silence is an indication that you don't have questions yet. But if you do, please don't hesitate to ask me later during the probably question and answer portion or open forum. So we're done with the Kahoot quiz. And, you know, it's been out now that you may need to review APA's seventh edition. If you don't have the manual, you may use Scribber. Let's talk about, you've, you've already learned the basics or the rudiments that you have to incorporate in the methodology part of your paper. Let's now zoom in on the research methodology itself. When, when we say research methodology, it's not really the method that you're trying to, to talk about. It's really all about the methodology. And we say when we say methodology, you're basically trying to answer the how, the how of your research. So it means how you will address the research queries or your research problems, or your research questions, or your SOPs. Your research methodology is a way how you intend to carry out your own research endeavor or your thesis. It's a logical, systematic plan to resolve a research problem. That's what we mean by research methodology. And when we say research methodology, you may have various approaches. In reality, we have three research approaches, namely quantitative approach, qualitative approach, or mixed methods approach. In your thesis, you only choose one among these three. And when you use, say, quantitative research in your paper, you may choose among these three. So you may have a survey research, some, some references use descriptive research. You can also use correlational research. You can also use experimental research. So if you use, you can also have descriptive research or you could use inferential research. If your questions revolve around probably what is the level, what is the extent that is simply uh, descriptive. It's a quantitative descriptive research, 
or if you ask questions like what is the difference or is there a difference or what is the relationship or is there a relationship that's a correlational research and then what is the effect or is there an effect if that's how you frame your research questions or problems you'll definitely need to use experimental research and my suggestion is if you really want to make your studies really uh, on a par with international standards or with universities top top performing or top tier universities in the philippines and in the world you might want to use inferential inferential like correlational and experimental but if not you can use survey research that's for quantitative approach for qualitative research designs you may use any of the following for nursing research phenomenology is abundant i may say some of my research studies are are lifted or are based or are anchored on research designs found in nursing research so phenomenology is beautiful it's just that you have to specify what kind of phenomenological research you want because it could be it could be descriptive phenomenological research like i have conducted i have one publication which makes use of husserlian phenomenological research design or you may, you may also use heideggerian as long as you have a specific phenomenological research so it's not enough to say you're going to use qualitative phenomenology what kind of phenomenological study will you use in your study grounded theory grounded theory is popularized by strauss in the 1960s and it's something novel nursing research there are also a lot of nurse nursing research studies that talk about grounded theory when you say grounded theory, you're going to create a new framework or a new model, or maybe you can have a simulacrum, simulacrum out of something. That's a grounded theory. For ethnography, I haven't found a lot of research or nursing research studies on ethnography because this entails a lot of time, money, and effort from the researchers. You really need to go to the field usually for community based research studies you can use ethnography you really have to be immersed in the community or in the house of the family you're trying to observe and for discourse analysis i don't think you're going to use this it's usually for literature related programs case study is pretty normal for medical related studies so case study Qualitative research designs are used in nursing research, not quantitative all the time. That's already passe or that's already usual. You may, you may want to venture on qualitative res research designs in your nursing studies. And then we also have mixed methods. We have, we have three types, but there are other types of mixed methods. But the most popular are the following. We have sequential explanatory design. This means you start quantitative in your approach and then you follow it up with a qualitative approach. I have a study as a sample later. And then you could also have it like sequential exploratory design. You start with a qualitative approach and then you support it with a quantitative approach. You could also have a convergent design. Convergent means simultaneously. So you have your conduct, you're using a qualitative approach. At the same time, you are using a qualitative approach. One succinct example is that research number, research problem number one, quantitative, research problem number two, qualitative. That is an example of a convergent design. So mixed methods, convergent design. You have to be specific, you have to be particular when you frame your research design. So it's not simply stating it as mixed methods. You have to state it what specific type of mixed methods approach are you using? I hope that's clear. Now let's talk about the samples. Mr. I, I feel like you have notes there, but I will flash it. 
for your reference. Can you see my screen? Can you see the research design samples? Here. Can you give me a thumb up reaction if you can? Not really. No, nah. uh, I see. No, sir. Okay, let me just stop sharing. But the word file is with you. The word file is with you. Share screen. Share. Here. These are all products of my research. These are my research studies. And so I'm speaking of my personal experience on research designs. Here, I made use of quantitative research design. So I use, I was telling you to be specific. I use quantitative, specifically descriptive research design. And if you use that, you have to establish why it's the kind of research design fit in your study. You have to kind of justify why. And then I said, furthermore, the research used data triangulation. Although I use a quantitative descriptive research design, I triangulated my data by having a questionnaire, by having a classroom observation, and by having a focus group discussion, and by having a one-on-one -on -one interview. This is a master's degree thesis, so you may not use data triangulation in the undergraduate, but you know, practicing all these things may equip you to become better researchers. We also have qualita a qualitative sample here. As you can see, I said I used, oh, you may ask me later, sir, you told us that we have to use the approaches like quantitative, descriptive, qualitative phenomenology. In some instances, depending on the standards of your institution or the standards of the College of Nursing, you may already let go of the research approach because it's understood that when you use a phenomenological research design, it's immediately qualitative in approach. So it depends on how the standard is in your department. In this case, I use phenomenology, so it's understood that it's qualitative in approach. However, I specified what kind of phenomenological research design this is. I said, this research is anchored on my, Martin Heidegger's interpretive phenomenology. That's the kind of phenomenological research design I use. And then we have here mixed methods, also a product of my study. You have, I, again, here, it's a matter of your creativity or how you write. So here I use sequential explanatory mixed method design. I could have used mixed methods design, sequential explanatory. So that's really up to you so long as you're specific in your approach. So that's for your research design. Let me just continue to the next. We have... Uh, could you just give me a thumb up reaction if you have your, your paper with you so I won't be putting it off and then go to my, my presentation again and go to Microsoft Word again. Do you have the copy with you? Thumb up reaction. Thumb, yes. I see. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Let's proceed to the next then. I hope that my screen is being presented. You always have to refer to the samples because the samples will guide you. They are specific examples. Let's proceed to the population and locale of your study. Again, there can be institutional variations or institutional differences. So in general, you may use population and locale for quantitative studies. You may use site and participants for qualitative studies. Or if you, if you use document analysis or discourse analysis, 
you use corpus of data. I repeat, corpus of data. Here are some top tips that I can tell you with regard to population and locale. When you identify the population and locale, it's imperative, it's a necessity that you identify the sampling methods. The sampling methods could be divided into two, depending on your research approach. If your research approach is quantitative, immediately you must use probability sampling methods or random sampling methods. If you use qualitative approach, immediately you will use a non-probability sampling method or non-random sampling. You have to specify that in your methodology. And then under, non, under random sampling or probably probability sampling methods, you have simple random sampling. This is also known as the, mm, like the aquarium part. That's a simple random sampling technique. You could also have cluster sampling. I haven't used this yet. Systematic sampling, I haven't used this yet, but I've used stratified random sampling technique. Stratified means you have different strata, like different strands in senior high schools. Those are called strata. And then from each strata, there's a particular number that I have to achieve. At any rate, you have to talk to your statisticians hand in hand, specifically when you don't know how to identify the sample size. That's my, my two cents. And when you use the qualitative part, you may use convenient sampling. Convenient sampling means anyone who can and who is able to answer, you use them. Judgmental or purposive sampling, this is the most useful. You use a specific set of criteria. You use a specific set of criteria, say they're only, you can find them in the samples. So just read the samples. Snowball sampling is for studies that are pretty sensitive. Say your nursing research study has something to talk about HIV related and your participants are people with HIV. Since it's difficult to you know, just simply ask, oh, do you have HIV? Do you have HIV that's highly unethical? You may use snow snowball sampling like, one HIV patient refers another HIV patient, and that HIV patient refers another person with HIV. That's called snowball sampling. And then quota sampling is the, the counterpart of stratified random sampling. Quota sampling is like this. Let's say you have mm, different strands in senior high school and you identify the number on your own without considering the overall population. At any rate, you have to be very specific. So just simply refer to the samples in that case. So study the samples. And then if you have questions, you may simply ask me later. I'm going to give you one minute to, to study the samples before we proceed to the next. So one minute starts right now. Time is up. If you have questions, you may unmute your microphones or use the chat box for your questions or clarifications. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay, we can proceed to the next. 
again, be very specific. Let's proceed to the next. We have institutional formats. At any rate, we may call it data gathering tool or research instrument or instrumentation. So any among the three will do. Top tips on, on your research instrument. Always describe the content of the instrument. For example, how many parts does the instrument have? How many items does the instrument have? Always do that. Also establish the validity and reliability of the instrument. A while ago, I was saying that you have to ensure that you adapt the questionnaire or adapt the tool with an A because you have to do some modifications. The modifications are necessary because you have to contextualize the instrument. For example, the instrument might have used abroad and the context abroad is different from the context here in the Philippines. In fact, the context here in Baguio City is different from your context in Santiago City. So you always have to tweak or to modify some things. In that case, you have to identify an expert to read your instrument, whether it's valid or not. After an expert or a set of experts validating your questionnaire or your instrument, it must undergo a reliability test. Mind you, for quantitative research, a reliability test is necessary. For qualitative research or for qualitative approach, you also have to identify the reliability by conducting a pilot test. You pilot test your research instrument or it's commonly called interview guide. It's commonly called interview protocol and you must need an aid memoir. I repeat, you must need an aid memoir. That's for qualitative approach. Now we have here the data, again, you may use any of the following. You have data gathering procedure. You may have data collection method. You may use data explication or you may use data collection procedure. Any among these will do. My top tip is that you walk the readers through the steps. You have to be very descriptive in the step-by-step -step procedure that you have to follow. And in here, you may incorporate some ethical considerations. That's why you also have to establish ethical considerations. What do we mean by ethical considerations? Since you're simply writing an undergraduate thesis, you identify like the letters that you've used, who are the recipients of those letters, who are the respondents of your study. So you have to ensure that letters are used correctly if you're going to base it in the community, letters to the community stakeholders must also be written. So basically, it's all about the letters that you use. Now, in the data gathering itself, you must also like give some, some, some explanations about what the overall research is all about, what the objective of your research is, what specific research queries you will address, all those pieces of information must be embedded in the ethical considerations. And the names must not be included. Say you're conducting a qualitative research. If the real name is Joseph, you have to rename. You have to rename. And then you, if you're using a quantitative approach and you're using a survey questionnaire, you have to ensure that data privacy will be used. So it's, it's important that you have to identify that data privacy will be used. I'm going to give you one minute to study the sample. And one minute starts right now.
when it's over. If you have questions or clarifications on the samples, please do ask me. Or you may write them in the chat box. I guess there are none yet. Let's proceed to the next part. We have data analysis, also known as treatment of data. Well, this basically talks about how you will address each research query or research problem. So my top tips are the following. First, establish how the researcher or researchers, researchers treated the collected data per research problem. It has to be indicated there. Research problem number one, how did you treat the data? Research problem number two, how did you treat the data? Maybe for research number one, you used mean or maybe median or maybe mode. For research number two, you used standard deviation. For research number three, you used, you used mm, maybe thematic analysis for problem number three. So that's how you deal with the, the, the treatment of data. For more information and for specific samples, please study the samples and you have one minute starting right now. And time is up. If you have questions or clarifications, you may unmute your microphones or type them in the chat box. Going once, going twice, I guess there is none yet. We can now proceed to the concluding part of my presentation for this afternoon's session. Before I move on to this concluding remarks, I would like to tell you that those samples are there for a reason. Make sure that when you craft the methodology part of your thesis or of your research, you, you go back to the samples, you go back and forth. We call that iterative. You know, research making, thesis making are iterative or, or is iterative in nature. Iterative means you go back and forth, go back, go back again, go back, go back again. It, it's always like that. It's a rigorous, it's, it's a rigorous process. It's exhausting. And so I, I would like to emphasize what Fung 2017 stated. He specifically stated in his book, I made a book review, a published book review on this. And this book or Fung 2017 specifically stated that Curriculum should be research-based. That is the predominant mode of student learning on contemporary degree programs, just like nursing as a degree program, should reflect the kinds of active, critical and analytic inquiry undertaken by researchers, in, the, in your case, undergraduate researchers. Where possible, students should engage in activities associated with research and thereby develop their abilities to think like researchers, both in groups and independently. That's why I would like to congratulate the organizing committee of the College of Nursing, simply because you, you are trying to invite a fresh perspective, although I'm pretty sure that your thesis advisors are able and capable of explaining these things to you. It also matters if you have other perspectives. So, Congratulations to the organizing committee. I feel like there will be a, a separate open forum for this. 
these are my references and thank you very much for your attention. The only thing or the only necessary for the only way for you to learn research is for you to conduct research specifically. So I would like to give the virtual floor back to Sir Iking. Or Mr. Darwin. Our heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Joseph for that very informative and interactive training session about research methodology. It is indeed a wonderful experience to learn, especially when this learning is happened to be instrumental for our daily tasks. As, as future nurses, you should also be a good researcher because in nursing research lies the development of good nursing practice and care to our patients. The information you have earned today is instrumental for future undertakings. Again, Doc, maraming salamat. As you have said a while back, you may type on the chat back your specific questions about the topic. However, because of our limited time, we restrict queries to only five to 10. Thank you, our dear virtual participants, for being attentive and for your involvement to this activity. Okay. Is there any question from the our virtual participants? I think, Doc Joseph, everything is all crystal clear. Good. <laughs> Naintindihan nilang mabuti yung ating topic ngayong araw na ito at talagang natuto sila. Okay, they are very interactive sila sa pagsagot nung sa ating quiz kanina. Okay, so kung wala na po tayong questions, then um, to express our gratitude to the guest speaker, a certificate of recognition um, will be provided. Allow me to read the content of the certificate. Northeastern College, College of Nursing, Santiago City, Philippines, awards this certificate of recognition to Joseph B. Ginto, LPT, PhD, for his invaluable effort and profound expertise as resource speaker in virtual sessions on research methodology in nursing context, the basic, conducted on October 29, 2022, 3 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. via Zoom meeting. Signed, yours truly. Enrique R. Kayaban, RNLPTMENUSRN, your research coordinator, and Ma'am Judith Milotranya, RNLPTMEN, Head College of Nursing. Thank you, Doc. To our dear attendees, you will receive your certificate of attendance if you completed and success successfully and submitted the post survey feedback form through the QR code. Let me read the content of the certificate. Northeastern College, College of Nursing awards this certificate of participation to your name for your active involvement in the webinar entitled Research Methodology in Nursing Context, The Basic, conducted October 29, 2022, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. via Zoom meeting. Signed, Enriquez R. Cayaban, RNLPTMAN, USRN Research Coordinator, signed Ma'am Judith B. Lutrania, RNLPTMAN, Head College of Nursing. To formally end our virtual session, I will give the line to Sir Paul Reganit, RNLPTMSN, Senior Clinical Instructor at NC College of Nursing, to deliver his closing remarks. Sir Paul. Oh, hi. Hello. Good evening. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Dr. Uh, Joseph. Good afternoon. And uh, ayan, so dito kasi sa Isabela, sir, uh, medyo ma maulan. Hindi na maulan. It's really, uh, the, the rain is really heavy. And some of our participants are actually uh, nag-log out na sila uh, from the, ano, because yung mga bahay nila is nagre-report na uh, may mga nabahana, umapaw na yung ilog. So, uh, we apologize kung may mga nag na, sir, na mga participants because of this uh, phenomenon. But anyway, uh, first and foremost, as I close this, um, 
seminar and symposium, I would like to express, of course, our sincere appreciation to our speaker, Dr. Joseph Quinto, sir, for your uh, valuable contribution to this uh, symposium on uh, research methodology in a nursing context. Yeah. So thank you very much, sir. I know you're, uh, you're too busy and then th this is a long weekend supposed to be and you should be enjoying your week, uh, your weekend, however you're here and uh, you're with us and with our students. Again, thank you so much, sir. And uh, of course, uh, thank you most importantly, our deepest gratitude to all who attended uh, the symposium. And so to our students here at uh, the NC College of Nursing, making it such a successful event. And so hearing and uh, learning from our speaker has educated you, our students, uh, the basics uh, on research. And so uh, hindi po, ang research hindi po dyan nagtatapos, hindi lang po dito nagtatapos. Ang research is uh, sa mga sajante namin, hindi lang po dito sa school. Uh, this is ongoing, pro ongoing process. Up until uh, you finish uh, all your all your degrees, tinan niyo si sir, ayan, so doctorate degrees, sana all. Ganyan. Ayan, so hopefully uh, may mga student din tayo na mag-follow uh, ng lead ni sir. No? And I am certain that uh, some takeaways from this symposium will further deepen our thinking and uh, uh, stimulate our minds uh, for your future reference in your studies, especially in your nursing research subject. However, uh, there, the weather is really inviting, so hindi ko na po pa. How about let's just leave uh, 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 this, I mean, the takeaways uh, for your uh, professors na magbigay na sa inyo ng mga takeaways ninyo. And uh, I know you have a lot of things to do pa. And of course, it is not particularly hard to imagine overcome the technical contents of a research study. So furthermore, all of these are important and some are perhaps more far re uh, reaching. I hope that uh, the context, uh, contacts rather, no, that have been made here will continue in the future. I am convinced along with many others that the contents that was discussed during the symposium, the APA, uh, the references, uh, the online references that was shared to us this afternoon was really very helpful, no? Even yung mga... And uh, gusto ko lang din palang i, uh, i, uh, kunin yung uh, uh, word na integrity. Ayan. So my dear nurses, no? Uh, being a nurse is... Uh, I mean, uh, being a nurse, yung integrity is a word na dapat lagi natin panghahawakan uh, in front uh, as uh, in front of our patients kahit nakatalikod sila, kahit na tayo lang gumagawa yung dapat na gawin natin para sa pasyente natin. We should always have this integrity, this honesty for our patients. And so hindi lang dito sa research yun, so that's applicable for our professions. Ayan, so... Again, uh, I am really convinced that along with many others that the contents of this symposium is very useful. Anyway, before ending my closing remarks, our deepest, of course, our deepest thank you, uh, thanks to our associate professor, Sir Enrique Kayaban, our uh, research coordinator, and of course, uh, Sir Darwin Viernes, sir, in facilitating and coping, coping up with this uh, symposium for uh, and of course, for your uh, priceless contributions and developing this successful event. Again, uh, my uh, future, our future nurses, always focus on the goal. Uh, focus on the goal. You can use every step of your student process in achieving it. And so, good luck, future RNs. And again, good afternoon and be safe, everyone. Thank you, Sir Paul. Pwede po ba tayong mag-picture or screenshot? Thank you, Sir Paul. Sige so, po. Okay. So, paki-open po yung ating mga cam. Para po... Attendees, kindly open uh, your cam. Paki-open po. Sir, tawagin ko lang si Ma'am Luti. Ay, sige, sige. Sige, sir. Sige, sige, sige. sige. Yeah. Sir Mark? Sir Mark, pass. Pasabi na lang sa pag-open. Na kayo. Sir Mark? Hi, Ma'am Lodi. Hi, Bess. Okay, smile. One, two, three.
Another, another po. Another. 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 Okay, okay na sir Mark. Thank you so much po. Thank you ma'am. Thank, Thank you sir. Thank you so much po. Thank you po. Thank you po. Okay, please access the QR code on the um, QR code or the link on the chat box for the attendance and feedback survey. We do hope you have learned a lot for today's activity. Nakamute ka sir da. Just a reminder, please indicate correct details to the digital survey. At maging instrumento po tayo ng professionalismo sa larangan ng medisina, pag-aaruga at pananaliksi. So everyone, happy Nurses Week. Thank mabuhay you and God bless. And seniors and College of Nursing. <laughs> Future you. RNs, good luck. Good luck po. Okay, can you scan po yung ating QR? para po for, uh, sa ating attendance and your uh, feedback survey. And also po, naka-indicate na po siya sa ating chat box. Ayan.